Hey, what's going on? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 319. 319. Today, we're talking about social media, specifically social media as it relates to the martial arts landscape, both overall as consumers and as a business. We're going to talk about what is different about social media from a martial arts perspective and what you can do if you're a school owner to leverage social media for maximum impact. Maybe you're new to my voice. My name's Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder of Whistlekick. We make sparring gear, and very shortly, we will have a whole bunch of other things. We're even going to talk about a new service that we have at the end of this show. I'm also blessed to be the host for this show, Martial Arts Radio. One of my favorite parts of the week is working on these episodes, getting to talk to amazing martial artists, and getting to share the things that I've learned as running Whistlekick. Getting to share them with all of you. Hopefully you enjoy them. People keep coming back and we're attracting new listeners all the time. Hopefully you'll share this episode or maybe another episode, your favorite episode, with someone who hasn't discovered martial arts radio yet. It would mean the world to me. Of course, you can find the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can find links to everything that we do from our online hub, our digital homepage, our e-store, whatever you want to call it, whistlekick.com. We keep it easy. Let's talk about social media. Social media, whether you love it, whether you hate it, it is here to stay, at least until something pushes it out. And I don't know what that's going to be. I can't imagine what that's going to be. I don't think any of us saw social media coming quite in this way, but it's here. And it has a tremendous impact. In fact, it's affecting things as large as international policy, as elections. It's massive, which means we have to at least be aware of it. Even if you're one of those people who personally don't participate in social media, it's still a good idea to know what's happening with it. It's part of our news cycle. It's part of the way people interact with each other. And if you have children or you're planning on having children, it has an impact on their daily lives, a massive impact. So we've got to care. Of course, this is a martial arts show. So we're going to talk about martial arts social media. There's a lot of it out there. There's a tremendous amount of great stuff out there. Of course, here at Whistlekick, we have our own social media accounts. We put most of our time into our Facebook and our Instagram accounts. And if you want to follow those, of course, they are Whistlekick, at Whistlekick, facebook.com slash Whistlekick, however you want to get there. But there's a lot of other great content. Some of it's original, some of it gets recycled. And you've probably seen quite a bit of it if you are online and kind of expressing your martial arts lifestyle to the world. There are tons of great accounts out there that you can follow, whether you're you're talking about individuals, maybe celebrities like Michael Jai White, who posts some great stuff, or folks who are, you know, maybe maybe not celebrities, but still making big moves and doing big things in the space. Someone like Sensei Jesse Einkamp, who's been on this show, of course. And then you've got more subject-oriented stuff like kick picks. Who, which comes from Mr. Stace Sanchez, but he's known online, of course, as Kick Picks and does some absolutely fantastic martial arts photography. Over the last few years, we've seen a dramatic shift from social media being a core of text to images to now video is kind of the king. And you can see some great stuff out there. There's instructional stuff. There's humorous stuff. There's a lot So I would encourage you, if you are not a frequent user of social media, if you think there's nothing out there for you, it's probably because you haven't spent the time looking at what your options are. Sure, if all you're doing is following the people that you know personally, especially if you're doing that across multiple accounts, it's going to get a little boring, especially as people post similar things, sometimes even the exact same things to each account at the same time. We try to mix it up. We will recycle some stuff. We we at least try not to put it out at the exact same time. So do that. Look around. As a martial artist, you can get value. So much value. But you have to focus in on what is important to you, whether it's following celebrities or following people that put out great content or, you know, motivation, instructional, doesn't matter. There's a lot you can learn from 30 to 60 seconds in a video. Yeah, you can grab that from YouTube, which, yeah, that's social media. But if you're looking for something that's more pushed to you 
on a regular basis, something like Instagram can be absolutely wonderful. So don't underestimate that. Let's talk about it from the other side. And even if you're not a school owner or some kind of martial arts related business, you might find this part interesting. If not, I'll see you next time. Let's talk about how you can use social media to reach people. It's a marketing tool. It is a way that you can engage with your audience, your prospective customers, or even your existing customers. Here's a fun statistic. It costs 13 times more to acquire a new customer than to retain an old one. And something like social media is a perfect example of that. If you get your students following you on social media, and yes, you should have a separate account for your personal life and your professional life, even if you don't use both of them, even if you only put your time into the professional account, and no, do not make a Facebook account called, you know, Jeremy's Martial Arts School, because they don't like that. You need to make a page. Facebook will shut you down. It happens. And then you get really sad. I need to have an account that is Jeremy Lesniak. And then I have, you know, then we have the Whistle Kick page. And we have, um, you know, we, like we made a separate page for Marshall Journal. All of those are separate pages tied into the Jeremy personal Facebook account. If you don't know what I mean, reach out. But I, I think I just made that clear. But you can use those pages to engage with your students. It can be as simple as, hey, um, the weather's really bad. We're not going to have class today. Or don't remember, we have testing on Friday, come early. Or, you know, hope everyone does well at the event this weekend, the tournament or something. And then on the flip side, you know, after the weekend, everyone did great at the tournament, send in your photos, post them here, things like that. You're trying to create a conversation. For so many martial arts schools... And we're going to focus on that because most of the people engaged in martial arts business that are listening to this are engaged in business as a school. You're looking to cultivate conversation. If you ever watch what happens after people are done training, you know, they'll spend five, 10, sometimes 15 minutes chatting with each other before they go home and shower, have dinner, spend time with their family. But social media is an opportunity for you to extend that community. To give access to it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if you do it well, you don't need to be the one driving all of it. You're looking to give people a space, kind of like your, your dojo, dojang, whatever you call it, where they can express themselves just as they would through movement in your classes that allows them to feel supported as someone who loves martial arts someone who is a martial artist. And there are a lot of ways you can do that. You can do that through asking questions. You can do that through logistical things that I mentioned, you know, class is canceled, class starts early, whatever. You can do that through humor. You can do that through public recognition of people that are in classes. Hey, great job to so-and-so, you know, straight A's on their report card. Or great job to, you know, this family for doing this charitable work. It can be martial arts related. It can be non-martial arts related. In fact, it should be a mix because the people in your classes, they're not only martial arts people. They do other things. And it's important to value them as more than just dollars on a ledger and just as students walking through your door. Social media gives you an opportunity to do that without taking away from class time. And it doesn't have to take that long. Even one post a week can do a lot. If you're doing nothing, it's better than nothing. I would say for most schools, three to five posts a week on each platform that you really care about is what matters the most. For most martial arts schools, if you're looking to retain students and bring in new students, you're looking at Facebook and you're looking at Instagram. Now, if you live in a broader area or depending on the type of people you're trying to bring in, you might be looking at Pinterest, you might be looking at Snapchat, you might be doing stuff on YouTube. There's so much that you can do. The sky is the limit. And that's where it can become overwhelming. It's important to figure out what's your budget in terms of time, most importantly, and sometimes dollars. Maybe you want to give your teen class the opportunity to put together a fun video 
maybe a demonstration, maybe some kind of themed, costumed mini movie, and you give them a budget of $50 for props or costumes. That kind of stuff can go a long way to making the students feel valued, feel engaged, and that kind of stuff gets shared all over the place. Social media, as far as I'm concerned, is the number one tool that martial arts school owners can use to bring in new members, if it's done right. If you post things, say photos or video from a class when they're doing something fun, that's going to get shared. Bring in a photographer and have professional or even semi-professional photos taken of the students and brand them with your logo. They're going to become people's profile photos. That's the stuff that you don't have to put a ton of time into, but a lot of other people see it. Your best prospects to come into your school are people that know people in your school. So why not give them the opportunity to share what you are doing collectively? If you've been following us on social media for any length of time, you know that we put a ton of effort into our social media. And I want to give a shout out to Andrea who coordinates all that for us. Facebook and Instagram are our primary accounts, but we also do stuff on YouTube and Pinterest and Twitter. And I think some of it gets recycled into Google+, Plus. not that anybody uses Google+. Plus. The main platform that we're not using professionally at this point is Snapchat. And that's because Snapchat just hasn't worked its way in. Honestly, should we be using it? Yes, but we are not because of time limitations. And that's one of the things that is important. Time. You've got to make sure that you have a strategy for when you're going to post. How often are you going to post? What kind of stuff are you going to post? And this is why we have rolled out a service. We had a number of schools come to us and say, hey, we like what you're doing with your social media. Would you help us? And so that's where we rolled out Black Belt Social Media. Blackbeltsocialmedia.com. Yes, this is a bit of a commercial. I'm going to do it quickly though. Bottom line, we have Black Belt Social Media. It is our division, chapter, channel, whatever you want to call it, where we are helping others with their social media for their martial arts related business, whether you're a martial arts school or something else. Over at the website, blackbeltsocialmedia.com, I am posting topic blog posts on social media related topics several times a week, three to five times a week. And that's just sharing all the things that we've learned. So if you're coordinating your own social media, get over there, look at it. I'm trying to help everyone. I want, I want martial arts to grow, right? Like that's the whole focus here. But if you don't have time, we have that as a service. We're starting at $19 a month and we can coordinate what you're doing, all original content. We can help your business grow. That, that's the bottom line. And I don't want anyone to think, oh, you know, um, I don't want anybody to think anything negative. I want you to check it out. Go, go look at the website. This is, this is not some big money grab. $19 a month, you can imagine. We are not making money on this. It's an attempt, really, to just kind of spread the word, to, to have schools out there see that we do more than just sell stuff. We're trying to share our knowledge. We're trying to interact. And yeah, I genuinely believe if we build that relationship with a school in, in social media, they're more likely to set up a wholesale account, buy product from us. You know, this is not rocket science. I'm not trying to hide our motivations. We're just trying to work with martial artists, with martial arts schools, and grow the Whistlekick brand. So check that out, blackbeltsocialmedia.com, or you can find the page that we made on Facebook. No, there is not a Black Belt Social Media page on Instagram. There will be at some point, but you have to choose where you start. You can't focus on everything. You have to focus on one thing at a time. Now, if you are still listening, hopefully you are still listening, I would love for you to chime in on your favorite martial arts social media accounts. Let's build a list. Go ahead, hit the blog, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, comment there, episode 319, and let me know, what are your favorite social media accounts? Or if you don't want to do that, you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. And of course, if you are interested in how we might interact with your prospective customers, how we might help you retain your existing students or clients, blackbeltsocialmedia.com. Check it out. 
I am sure that we can help you improve. So that's all I got today. I appreciate your time. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. 